Would you date a bus driver? You. Would you date if a bus driver? If he owns driver? the bus. If he owns no. it. If he owns the bus. See, that's a look. problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Okay. Because the standards and requisites, and I'm not talking about him laying on his sofa playing video games all day. <laughs> I'm not talking about mm -hmm. that. But the standards and the criteria that we use to measure men is off for who mm. we are as women and who they are in this society. I would date a bus driver mm. if he was if he loved driving the bus, if he was a man of integrity, if he was good to his mama, if he treated me well, I would date a bus driver. But we think that it's another human being's responsibility to give us what we need instead of us building together. I can build with a bus driver. Mm. I'd have my little stash over on the side in my prenup, but I could build with a bus driver. Mm. <laughs> so I think some of the criteria that we look for in the reality of today keeps us unhappy, keeps us angry, mm. keeps us in balance. And then when the men show up, we want to beat them up because they're not living up to our standards and criteria. And and it's not working, beloved. It's just not working. So it's not that it's bad or wrong. It's obsolete. Mm -hmm. It's obsolete. Mm. We have to come up with a new way of being. I don't believe in carrying a man. A man has to do for himself. The problem is black females when they look at the black man they automatically dehumanize him by putting up these standards and what makes him equivalent to be worthy enough to be her man and that's the problem with the black female is they don't understand and they choose not to understand it's actually a active conscious choice that they make every day is that they choose to not understand what is happening in the black community and what has happened to the black family and how since slavery all they have done is destroy the relationship between the black man and the black woman before even they did that even at the time during slavery the black family were unified they were unified through it so what they had to do was continuously attack the family to break it up and by doing that is they gave the black woman more opportunities they gave her benefits they gave her promotion feminism so she can be able to leave the black home leave the black man leave the black family and do it by herself and by doing that because now she is financially in a better place she now resents the black man because he is incapable of doing it but here is the problem is not is it's not his incapability for not doing it is how the system has been set up and this is what their aim was to always do is by making sure that the black man does not financially climb the same ladder as the black woman and this is how they begin to dehumanize the black man by resenting him for where his state is at and financially where he's at so automatically he becomes a nobody automatically he is not good enough he is not worthy enough he is below average he's a dusty that's very dehumanizing you don't even see him for who he is and what type of man he is you just see him for how much he either can make or cannot make and that's the problem is the black female have been pulled out their home so they can destroy the black family and now they're angry at the black man because they left the home instead of staying and building with the black man black females today call it struggle love it's not struggle love it's a war we are at war and the sooner people get this black people get this the better it's not struggle love we are at war and what happens at war is there's different attacks and different tactics made to destroy you so you don't elevate war doesn't just mean 
that you need guns and bombs and grenades. War can also be intellectually and by making sure that the mind is brain dead, by making sure that you can insert certain things into someone's mind, intellectually attack the black home, the black man, the black woman, well, it's a war. Because that is where the most harm is being done. That is where the wall is being created. That is where they will actually be no real movement and this is where black females like her don't want to comprehend it and don't realize it either and they don't want to see it because they've already dehumanized the black man the same way the system has the same way the white man has they have done the same thing so out of the 50,000 plus comments posted on social, I only saw a handful that even considered the possibility of a bus owner being a more aspirational position and recognizing that I am actually speaking and pouring into the ascension of black men when I said what I said. But see, no, some of y'all were too busy naming and shaming me personally and black women in general as undesirable gold diggers and much worse. Now, I suspect that some of y'all are the same men that were bringing home C's and D's on your report cards, only to then be coddled by parents that said, well, that's okay, as long as you're doing your best. Well, listen, I love and believe in the excellence of black men. So no, my dear, C's and D's or any other form of mediocrity is not okay. No, I will not create a soft place for you or anybody that I love to fall comfortably into the bigotry of low expectations. So I'm going to say one more time, there's absolutely nothing wrong with driving a bus. My mother Gloria drove one for years. But could it be that black America has been sold a narrative of average, regular, and typical being good enough for us? Hmm. Well, see, that's called white supremacy. And in this case, it takes the form of conditioning black Americans to happily accept being a permanent American underclass. But see, because I know the truth about black folk in America, no, average is not and will never be good enough for me. And the gag is, I don't think it's good enough for you either. She said a whole lot of stuff and nothing at the same time. And really, in translation, what she said is, black females shouldn't accept average, shouldn't accept typical black man shouldn't accept struggle love because white supremacy conditioned us to believe that this is the norm this is where you are completely over your head and you don't know what you're talking about and because you said it in such a educated manner you thought you were actually making sense you thought you actually said something here and really you said what every other black female says is that they don't want an average man see this is the problem is you do not understand what white supremacy is because if you did you wouldn't be speaking this way you wouldn't be here unmarried if you really understood what white supremacy is and what white supremacy does white supremacy doesn't condition us to be permanently average no it places you in a place where you stay permanently average that's what white supremacy does no one actively chooses to be permanently average it's absurd it's as if you decided to give yourself your own definition of what white supremacy is to make you feel comfortable with the choices that you make because you know inside that the choices that you make actually advocate white supremacy by dehumanizing the black man, by overlooking the black man, by calling him permanently average. You know exactly what you're doing. But you will blame white supremacy because of your own behavior. Now that's foolish. And you try to flip the script when really all you did was shine a light to what you really are and who you really are and the truth is you was never interested in the black man you was never interested in the average man you was never interested in building the community you was never interested in what the real problem is 
all you was interested in is getting the biggest rock you can get on your finger and live your happily ever after so don't try and act as if you are here for black america you're here for the black people because you ain't because if you was none of this will come out your mouth the truth about black america is white supremacy has placed a system in america since slavery and because of that system and because of white supremacy this is why black people don't have no generational wealth this is why we don't have our own economy this is why we are at the bottom this is why we don't own anything this is why nothing has been passed down so you want to speak about it being conditioned to us no the outcome of the condition we're in is because of white supremacy not the other way around wake up i feel like i'm reacting to a fool who just opened the book and got a few words buzzwords to say to make herself feel better because the truth is you don't care about the black community you want to be part of the white community knowing damn well about your past and who you married that's what you chose how dare you speak about black people as if you was ever even considered to be a part of them you was ready to marry a white billionaire which white supremacy put him there so i don't understand how she can sit there and act as if she actually cares when she don't do you know why she's saying all these things because she showed her ass and she showed who she really is and she wants to act as if she's this conscious black female who understands the struggle when really you was really you was ready to sell yourself out to the next white man father who was a leader in law do you think for one second i'm about to push back on anything you just offered in that statement uh, you can't right, right. So, 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 can. so i cannot and so what i'm telling you is what you are applying now is not the facts as they were given to me the, ayala did not ask me Ebony, would you date a bus driver that also had a real estate portfolio? Mm. Ayala did not ask me. Hold on now. Uh, Ebony, would you date a bus driver that also has um, a, a litany of franchises? Because you and your wife just bought five, right? Six. Chris, six, six crystals. Chris Crystals? Yeah. Mm, exactly. Crystal Burgers. Okay. Mm -hmm. She didn't ask. That was not the framing of the question, Envy. Yeah. Had that been the framing of the question, I would have said, Dr. Vons, where the fuck he at? See, it's crazy how she will say that the black man has been conditioned to be permanently an underclass but you can only be with a black man with condition so what does that say about you and what you've been conditioned to be because the only way you can see yourself with a black man is if he is at a certain condition that satisfies you this is the same condition that you are saying white supremacy made us black people to think that this is where we're supposed to be at when really they've only conditioned you to look at the black man not as a human but as some type of product that you can buy that can be able to produce things for you instead of actually building with him as a human being and being unified with him as a family as part of a community see that's the conditioning that you ain't talking about that's the conditioning that you choose to not look at with all that useless knowledge that you have you can't even see that your own black mind has been warped by the white supremacy that you so love to mention. On the working class and the people that were in them comments more than it was the man you're looking for. So let's address it, Weezy. I, I'm glad you brought that up because that is the turn that I took. So at this point, who gives a fuck about who Ebony K. Williams is dating? Let's throw that over to the side because it's, it's, it's irrelevant. That's your preference, and I agree. Not, and and, and, right, and right. who gives a fuck, right? So now let's talk about my real work in this world. The work God has called me to do, which is to always sit in a posture of elevating, advancing, and offering options to black Americans. This is what black females love to do, is turn the blind side at your history, at who you are and what you've done. Because it is important, because what's coming out your mouth, we need to understand where it's really coming from. So let's take a look at Ebony K. Williams' history and past relationships where the engagement that she had with her ex-fiance who was a white billionaire failed how did it fail because you failed to be a woman 
word in the streets is you are now in a single motherhood journey complaining how there's not enough black sperms black donors so you can have a child by yourself yet you want to speak about what type of black man should be and what type of black man they are when you can't even find a man to even have a child with you have to spend god knows how much money to just have a child by yourself and you will easily speak about how god placed you on the earth to do his work but really that's blasphemy because you are raising a child without a man where does it in the bible say that a woman is supposed to raise a child without a father figure without a man what type of god work is this you have failed and it's quite charming you have the cheek to speak about the standards that a black man should live by you speak about the class but look at you here struggling in your own struggle love you couldn't even be a wife your own husband didn't even invite you to stay at his place for quarantine because the truth is you ain't no woman figure mother and you didn't put no effort to be that either see she thought that any man would simp over her she thought that the white man would lust over her and do everything and beyond to be with her and wife her when really it takes two to put in the effort it takes you to put in the effort to be a wife And because you didn't do that and expected him to do most of the work for you, you decided to split. Because in reality, you realised, she realised that this engagement was going nowhere. It failed. Now she's at 40, planning to have a child by herself with a sperm donor, which she throws her eggs to do. This is where she's at. But she wants everyone to turn a blind side to her past, her relationship. That's what gets me. You are the definition of failure, failed woman. That's what you are. You failed to get married, you failed to have a husband, and you failed to have a family. And now you're doing it by yourself. And you want to call it single motherhood journey. Well, that ain't God's work. So, so when you start talking about all this, and, and I read the comments just like you did because I wanted to prepare myself when you came up here to, to understand what people were mad about, yeah. what, understand what people were upset about. So when you're talking about all this, this brother this, and, and the black man this, and the white supremacy this, and this, that, and the other, that's all to the side of how you felt about that quote unquote average job, right? And, and, and I'll be honest with you, right? One of the comments that I said, and, and, and maybe I'm not sure, right? The guy was like, he was like, you talk about all this about lifting the brother up and lifting, lifting this up and white supremacy and, and what you do for our people. And then the first thing the brother said was, but your fiance was white. And I'm sitting there like, how, how do you talk about how much you're uplifting and how much you're going for black people? But that's not necessarily what you're even looking for. Well, first of all, Paging Dr. Umar, damn. Well, no, that, that's well, the, no, let's, let's address and, it. And, and, and and let's, wrong, not, let's, not skip, let's not skip a beat. Mm-hmm. So I would love to know how you envy know what I'm looking for. We never had the conversation. I don't so, know. But, but, not a lot of people like to have this conversation, but it needs to be had. The truth is when you are a black person and you choose to advocate for the black community and then you decide to date outside your race well you're not actually advocating for that community really think of it like this do you see a white supremacist dating a black woman do you see a white supremacist having mixed race children and telling his mixed race son marry a mixed race man or a black man do you really see that happening so now let's flip it a person that advocates for black people a person that wants to elevate the black community and keep the black family unit well 
doesn't it work against that whole movement when now you are dating outside of your race because the truth is being an advocate for the black people means actually doing what you speak about you can't just talk about it and not be a doer you're a hypocrite you actually need to be a representation of what you believe and since she wants to mention passionately about God's work well let's talk about King Solomon how he tore down pagans but then after that he decided to build it back up because he lusted over strange women so in that aspect God doesn't advocate hypocrisy this is actually how King Solomon began to become a sinner and wasn't righteous in God's eyes anymore because the the one thing that made him righteous he decided to do it right after again he tore it down to build it back up so now tell me this what exactly are you doing that is God's work and what is it that you're really building because from what I know, you are supposed to be a help me for a man. Instead, you choose to do what you want to do, be with whoever you want to be with, and say what you want to say, and say that that is God's work. When even King Solomon couldn't even do half the things that you are doing. And he's a man. And that's the hypocrisy coming from you. He's thinking and telling people that you are doing God's work when actually you're speaking blasphemy. Keep her on the side. I think that's why Look, I'm my like... Father, my father was a military. He was a mechanic. He was a bus driver. He was a police officer. So he was officer. exceptional. Your father was exceptional. My mother worked at Guardian Life Insurance. I'm the first person in my family to go to college, first person to graduate from college, and my parents put me through college. So I don't look at them as mediocre. I don't look at them as average. They are exceptional, and they did what they do to get their what kids through all this so stuff. What you said is so different than what I'm talking and about. And I am the same envy. with them. And, and I am the and same. And that is and the just not and the intellectually honest what you're doing. And the difference is what you said is, oh, you want to encourage and you want to do this. I do the same thing without putting people down. I'm not putting I, people down. I'm being very I honest. I think you are. And me. people have been saying, I don't think you're and, listening. Like, as much as you talk, you're not listening to what people I'm are saying. Listening. I'm not, not bothered by that, though. Not. I'm not because going to be shamed. Because people and they have opinions. Just like I you have your opinion, you can't talk over people and not let people talk. But you're also interrupting me, Envy. I'm not. I was talking. You keep... What's funny is she will say that his parents are exceptional, but she's a hypocrite to say that. Because... What is exceptional about those two parents is the fact that they were able to do everything with nothing. They were able to get together and unify, be united, be a man, let the man be a man, let the woman be a woman, work together to raise a healthy child and give him the best that you guys have produced together and make an exceptional child where he's at right now and what she doesn't understand also is she'll speak about how the bus driver needs to own the bus but here's the problem you are once again speaking about generational wealth because for you to own something it needs to be passed down or it can be taken away from you so you already don't understand what owning something really means and how far back it goes the truth is, in your eyes, his parents are dusties. And you would rather date him. But the truth is, you are with the same dusty child that you see his parents to be. You're a hypocrite. And what you want to do is feed all people success. You don't want to be exceptional. You don't want to raise an exceptional child. You want a man to be ready made so you can eat off his work. That's what you want. And this is what a lot of black females don't understand. I don't want average. I want this. I want that. But it's the fact that when you get together, you do become exceptional. Because working from the ground up and building something together 
to pass down to generation and actually building generational wealth for your child now that is exceptional and that's what his parents did and she not only demonized it but looked down at it took down at it without even realizing and you know what that makes you average these black females they're so average they can't think beyond what it takes to build something what it takes to be something they already want it to be already made that's how average they are very average people average thinking they don't look beyond things they just want things now ready made now because they think they're worthy of it when really they are far worthy of it she will never be able to produce anything exceptional just like his parents did she will never be able to raise an exceptional son just how his parents did anything that she produces will not even be close as exceptional as what his parents did those average dusties that she looked down at they will be able to produce more exceptional children than she will ever be able to this is what is wrong with black females today is they all have this mindset that ebony k williams has is they think they're not only above approach above average but that what they have made in this world because of white supremacy somehow is god's work that has given them this blessing and that somehow is god's work that they can be here and just curse the community when really it's far from that we are at war and you don't realize you're being used to attack the black community and guess what it is working let me know what you think thank you for watching Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Bye.